Hello, hello, hello. What's good, guys? This is Vahography. I'm Vahagen, your rock and roll photographer. This is Vahography Talk, episode number 67, live. All right. Today, we have two special guests in the house. Well, I don't think they need any introduction, but Evelyn and Jordan Drake, Mr. and Mrs. Evelyn and Jordan Drake. Let's bring them in right now. Hello, guys. Hey. Hey. Thanks for having us on, Vaughn. Oh man, thanks for thanks for accepting my invitation. Uh, this is a special treat for me because I mean I'm on YouTube and I watch you guys' content on two different channels <laughs> <laughs> in yeah. the mainstream photography YouTube uh, you know arena. <laughs> First yeah. of all, how are you guys how are you guys doing? We're doing great. It's been kind of a busy time, but it's been very exciting. And uh, Dave, of course, sends his regards. He was originally going to join me today, uh, but it's his daughter's graduation, so he couldn't couldn't miss that. No. <laughs> so we got Jordan instead. I mean, I know probably some of your your followers might know Jordan uh, quite well uh, from originally the Camera Store TV and then DP Review TV, and then now he's made his new adventure onto Petapixel. Yeah, and I mean, this is kind of a great time to jump on because we're coming to the end of our first month making stuff for Petapixel now. So I'm kind of settled in a little bit more uh, and can definitely tell kind of the differences between working for DP Review before for and now with Petapixel. So we can talk about that a bit. Yeah. Nice, nice. You guys, yeah, uh, you, DP Review was in the news lately, you know, and the, the whole lot. Petapixel thing. Man, I was crazy because Petapixel's YouTube channel, overnight, I think it went from like 10,000 to like how many subscribers? 100,000. It was yeah, crazy. Yeah, in the first couple of days, it was close to 100,000, um, which I think is such a, a testament to um, how, you know, Jordan and Chris's following has has been so strong for so many years. And, um, you know, it's great to see the the photo community continue to support them. And, um, you know, we, we've seen even through us, you know, six years ago, taking over the camera store TV, that it's been such a great audience. And, um, and has followed everybody along. I mean, I was pretty excited because, you know, we went from DP Review with four times as many subscribers over to Petapixel kind of starting it from scratch. But our views are actually as good, if not a little bit better than what we would have expected releasing those same things for DP Review. So the audience really has followed us over, which is really exciting for Chris and I. Yeah, that's cool. Russell says, I've really been enjoying the new Petapixel videos. And he says right here in the earlier comment, apparently no one told me <laughs> my two favorite camera journalists are married. <laughs> uh, nice. Yeah, Jordan and I have been married since 2009. Um, and then we've worked together. Actually, we were just reminiscing about it. Um, we started working at Black's Photography back in like 2004 when we were we were babies. We were very, 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 very young. <laughs> um, we started dating there and, um, and then we've kind of followed along in, in our careers, like working, uh, in the photo business. Um, so I still work for the camera store. I've been with them uh, since 2006 Jordan joined the same year. And, um, yeah, it's been kind of a, a crazy ride, but it's, it's really nice to be able to do this together as a couple, because I think it would be really tough to have someone that isn't in this space <laughs> to be understanding of, of, you know, what the process is like, the time consuming nature of it. Um, so we're able to kind of work as a team behind the scenes on both our channels. Yeah, I mean, when there's a big embargo coming up, it's something you kind of have to be involved in YouTube or like a journalist or something to understand that is taking up all your time for the mm -hmm. next little while you have to hit those deadlines. So yeah. Ev gets it and we can both help each other out you know when that's there's cool. a bunch of stuff you know like may is not supposed to be a big photography product launch but i got three full-length episodes this week and there's still more stuff coming it's bedlam yeah. lots we're, of good stuff happening we're gonna get into that we're gonna get into youtube and what you guys you know your day-to-day -day, and i want to know because i have a channel and yeah, obviously you, you, know. you guys have been doing this for years and you guys are kind of like the the big channels in photography world so I want, I want to know more of the insides and stuff, but let's touch on a little bit about Nikon because Nikon, they came out with the Z8, the Z8. And uh, <laughs> we appreciate all the Zs you can throw our way. Yeah, hey, it's just natural yeah. for us to call it the Z. So apologize when, if it sounds weird to 
to American followers. But we are bilingual. So if you want to say Z, that's okay. We can work with you there. <laughs> All right. I got my hat, my T-shirt. You see? Z8. <laughs> um, what do you guys think? Have you guys had a chance to really use the camera and play with it? Yeah, I mean, we were very excited when we first heard about it, when we were briefed on the camera. Um, of course, uh, maybe a little bit uh, skeptical at first because they were saying that they took the Z9 and basically all of the performance, the power, the features, um, and put it into a smaller body. And we kept kind of waiting, like, okay, well, what's the catch? What are they? What are we missing here? And it, it's super limited. I mean, it. I think it creates a nice option for people that if they're not um, as concerned about having like the integrated vertical battery grip, um, they're okay having a smaller battery. Um, you get everything else. And at least in Canada, it's $1,600 cheaper. What is it in the US? Uh, it's $1,000 less. So nice. it's still yeah. good. But I mean, it's a pretty big difference. And to have something that is a little bit easier to bring around with you, um, it just, I think it fits in the hand really nicely. Um, I mean, you have bigger hands and you still feel like you get a good grip on that camera. I love the grip on the eight, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's kind of when it came out, when the Z9 was released, really reminded me, I don't know how long you've been shooting Nikon, but when the um, D3 came out, mm -hmm. you know, before that Nikon was really lagging behind in terms of like autofocus, image quality, things like that. And then with one camera, they kind of caught up overnight. And that's really how I felt about the Z9. But then if you remember like six months after that, they brought out the D700, which was all basically all the functionality of the D3 in a smaller body. So I think they really followed that mold. They're in the same place right now where they really need to gain market share. So they're like, let's not hold anything back. Let's just mm -hmm. give you, if you want a big body, that's fine. You don't have to pay a huge premium for it. But if you want uh, smaller, lighter, cheaper, you're still getting all the really good stuff they've developed recently. Did you, you guys had, uh, you guys had your video out on the Z8? I don't recall. Yep. Yeah, we both did kind yeah, of the right. first impressions video. Uh -huh. So Jordan was able to go on a little bit of a road trip with it. Um, oh, that's we right. We had it that's in right. Calgary. Um, mm -hmm. So we did a puppy shoot because <laughs> a friend of mine just got a new puppy. And so we wanted to see how animal tracking was with it. It does really well with canines. Um, and of course, you know, everyone loves dogs online. So that was a really good pick for us. Um, and it worked really well. Performance was awesome. It was kind of what we expected when they said it was all of the Z9 um, features and firmware. They added a new uh, profile, which was airplanes. So I tested that out, took it to the airport. Um, worked well. I mean, am I going to be shooting airplanes in my day-to-day -day life? No. Um, but of course, it's just fun to test out the new technology and see how well the tracking performs. You, you get, you guys, in... what was that, Jordan? No, I was going to say you guys keep up with the... Uh... Uh, what's going on like online on the comments about the camera i just want to touch on that there's a lot of stuff yeah. being said about overheating uh some videos put out that weren't i guess favorable to nikon by prominent you know youtubers <laughs> you can say their names <laughs> i mean okay matt, i mean i don't have a problem saying that I, matt granger put out a video that kind of sparked a little bit of controversy um and you know from the comments and stuff uh you know i just want to know if you guys keep up with with who puts what out are you guys just yeah it's kind of it's a balancing act because i do want to form my own opinion mm -hmm. uh, i think there can be a real issue of you know just living on the comments and getting wrapped up in that kind of mob mentality uh you know the reason that we test stuff ourselves is people want to know our own opinions and the way that we work uh, for both of us. So I think it's important to keep an eye on what people are saying, but also really test things yourself. Like you brought up the overheating. We just got our production Z8. It took a while to get it out of the States. So Chris is actually out shooting it right now and I'm doing overheating tests on that on Thursday. Uh, so we will have our own um, perspective on it as well. Uh, but I can certainly say when we shot our video in Yellowstone, I mean, it wasn't the warmest. You can see there's snow out there when we were filming it, but I didn't run into any issues with overheating. And we shot that entire video in 8K, 
which I then promptly uh, regretted once I got back to editing. <laughs> yeah, those AK footage. files are heavy. Stacks of hard drives, but uh, yeah, but yeah, we've tested it fairly well in the field. But I, you know, I am gonna throw it on record mode with the stabilizer going and just let it roll as long as it can and see how it performs in those situations. Because I mean, like live music, for example, that is incredibly important. It's not just you know some arbitrary thing testing overheating for a lot of people. It's really important for how they make their living. Yeah, we didn't have any specific issues with overheating. Um, we were more just, you know, going through battery power was was our biggest um, issue, I guess, on the video side of things. Um, but, you know, I, I think a lot of the time when you look at something for practical use versus, you know, testing it to the full capacity, do I think that the Nikon Z8 is going to be practically an awesome camera um, that a lot of photographers and content creators are going to be able to utilize as an awesome tool? Yes, absolutely. Like, I think it is going to be a really big hit for Nikon. Because I just, uh, yeah, I mean, Jordan, you're a video guy. I mean, you're, you're all into the video side of things. And I would say that the Z8 really, uh, Nikon did a really good job. I mean, the Z9 isn't the ultimate hybrid video tool, right? And we got the Z8 now, smaller form factor, almost same camera. I, I don't know. But with yeah, the camera. We've, we've joked that it's like the Z9 killer in a way. Like they're kind <laughs> of butchering their top end lineup. <laughs> but uh, maybe that's intentional. Yeah, I think I they sold, I mean, when was the last time a flagship camera was as big as the Z9? I mean, that was a very popular camera and, you know, flagship pro bodies used to be very niche. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, I mean, even talking with Nikon, they're like, look, we know this is going to kill the Z9 for the vast yeah. majority of people. And, yeah. you know, as a video shooter, I want a smaller, lighter body. I can put it in a smaller cage. It makes yeah. a lot of sense. It's got the little PD plug in it now with the two USB ports. So I could just power it off, you know, yeah, V mount battery or whatever. Yeah, that eliminates the, the power consumption yeah. issue completely. Oh, wait, he, oh, there he is. There he is. There oh, he is. Hello. There's Chuck. <laughs> Hi, Chuck. Hey, Evelyn. Hi, Chuck. Hey, Jordan. Hey, sorry I'm late taking care of some business here and just got caught up in it. <laughs> That's all good. Well, good to meet you. Nice to meet you all as well. <laughs> hello, hello, Chuck. You guys, uh, know, you guys, hey, well, I want to welcome everybody at the chat as well. Uh, go ahead and hit that like button. Uh, I really appreciate that as well. What's going on, Chug? We got Evelyn and Drake here. Yeah, uh, you guys are, uh, man, you know, of course, you're well known. Uh, Jordan been watching you for the longest time. Uh, and Evelyn, since you uh, picked up at the camera store, following you guys as well. Like did I say Evelyn and thinking. Drake? You did, I, but I, I was going to let sorry. it slide because he is the Drake. He is the Drake. <laughs> Evelyn and Jordan Drake. Sorry. Sorry. I have been Drake longer if we're going to go <laughs> that, chronologically. That is true. That is true. <laughs> so, Chuck, we've been just talking about the Z8 and, you know, about what's going on online about it. I mean, uh, the latest videos that we've seen, the complaints, um, you know, we've been touching on that a little bit. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it, it's a shame that anytime a new camera comes out that there people are going to seek out the worst in it uh, first. Oh, and yeah. that's just the way it is. Uh, but, I, you know, is it getting a fair shake out there in the U in YouTube land? I think for the most part it is, but there are some people that have found things that may or may not be an issue and you know how that goes. But I'm looking forward to Well, I think in it. the next week, the next week, we're really going to see the um, everything unfold because it's going to start getting into people's hands. Like it's going to be in the public's hands, and I think that's when you start to see the shift happen on the forums. Um, and then sometimes, you know, on in our space on the YouTube world, people change their tune as well because you have like more real world testing, more practical use cases. Um, so yeah, the the ship date for when it's going to start getting in people's hands is the twenty fifth. So that's Thursday. Um, so we're really excited to see people's reactions to it, real users that, um, you know, that they're going to make this their camera. So it's not just people testing it, putting it against everything else that they have, but people that are actually going to use it and hopefully enjoy it. Yeah. And yeah. I do think, um, 
there's a, there is a lot of concern of like, oh yeah, you just say negative things about it to stand out as a reviewer, but it is also, it's our job to tell people like, hey, in some situations you might have issues. Like I mentioned the overheating, which I haven't tested yet. I want to test that out. Or, you know, we did a shoot with the, um, both the Z9 and Z8 did really struggle um, when I was in heavy snow. Um, that was one mm. use case like, hey, Great if you're going to be doing, you know, outdoor winter sports or something like that. This is something that you need to be aware of. Uh, so I think it's good for people to, you know, have that background as well. But yes, in the majority of cases, these are awesome cameras that are going to satisfy what people need. Yeah, I, I was going to say, Jordan, and uh, no offense to you, you are a reviewer. And, you know, I, I do appreciate you being at least as non-biased as you can be. Uh, others aren't so much that way, but you're absolutely right, Evelyn. Uh, this thing will be in everybody's hands or, or quite a few people's hands uh, come Friday. Yeah. And then, you know, everybody's going to gravitate to the normal shooter to find out what they think and what issues they have or don't have or whatever. We start to dispel some of the, uh, you know, negative things that come out of the reviews. Uh, not all of reviews are negative, but you know, it's just, this is a unique camera too. I think both of you have to admit, uh, because we call oh, it the baby Z nine, but it, and it is a baby Z nine, but with some limitations because of the size of the battery, the cards and other things. So I don't think it's going to be as big an issue once it's in everybody's hands. I don't know how you guys feel about that, but anyway yeah i think so I, i'm pretty confident that um the people that have it on order um i know a lot of them even through the camera store i think they're going to be satisfied with it uh, but i am curious to see what the what the reverb effect is going to be online uh once that happens well and we're in a special position where you know, Ev and I have been using cameras with stacked, even stacked full frame sensors for a long time. So it's like, yeah, we know all the advantages of this, yeah. but those have been in pretty much exclusively these high end flagship cameras or cameras with smaller sensors. Mm -hmm. So since this is more like a, you know, a prosumer enthusiast series, people are actually going to get to experience that for the first time. You're right. And I think yeah. the other thing that's kind of interesting is that this is targeting like D850 users. So people that maybe bought a Nikon D850 camera, um, what would that be like six years ago? And if yeah. they haven't shot mirrorless, um, I mean, the advancement that the mirrorless technology has had, even just little things like the um, electronic, electronic viewfinder experience has come such a long way um, since the D850 that I think those users are really going to realize a lot of those benefits that they might not have thought about um, just reading forums and maybe seeing some content out there. Yeah, and even with the Z6, Z7, I always said, like, you know, there's some real advantages to the mirrorless Nikons, but there's still stuff that your DSLR does better. And now we're hitting the point where it's like outside of battery life, there's really no major advantages for DSLR now. Yeah, I, uh, before you go there, uh, Vog, and I know you're chomping at the bit there for the super chat, but... Uh, I just want to say thank you for bringing up the D850 because it's been one of my uh, points that I've tried to make. And I think that, uh, you know, one of the things that really stands out is the fact that there are more and more people are going to get to experience the EVF out of the Z9 in the Z8. And I think they're going to be pleasantly pleased at how good that is. I really do. Hey, Chuck. Yeah. Chuck, oh, lower your mic just a tad. I think you're little yeah <laughs> well while he while he does that i just wanted to add that sometimes it sounds like as reviewers maybe we're blowing a little bit of smoke when we say um like the z9 and the the z8 electronic viewfinders are so good because when you look at it on paper the resolution isn't really that exciting um compared to some of the other ones out there but they've done an amazing job with how they've how they've um implemented it so the optics on it um how bright it is i think it's one of the brightest electronic viewfinders out there um, and I just, every time you look through it, you're like, wow, this is, this is good. This is going to yeah. make your photography and, and video experience great. And, and I want to say, I'm not touting it as the best out there. I'm just uh, trying to explain to so many other people that we're talking about it that haven't experienced this viewfinder because yeah. they're used to the Z6 series, Z7 series. And I, I tried to explain to them, I think you're going to be very happy with the viewfinder that you're going to get in the Z8 because it is the Z9 as well. So, yeah, no, yeah. the viewfinder is great. Uh, with me, the battery isn't an issue. I mean, it's so easy to switch batteries out. 
that I just, you know, I have so many ENEL 15s that boom, you're yeah. done. You know what I mean? And plus, I heard a lot of people got, they're getting about 1,800 to 2,000 photo stills in one battery. Like uh, Manny Ortiz just put out a really good review on the Z8. A oh, yeah, really good review. Did, did, have you, did you watch that review with the 400, 45 baseball? Did you see that? I haven't seen that one yet. No, there's a, there's a bunch of um, all coming out this week. And again, I'm trying not to watch until I've done <laughs> right. testing. Uh, hey. So yeah, I can just see all the Americans who didn't have to deal with getting something across I the border. Uh oh, we've lost an earbud. Oh, uh -oh. <laughs> one minute. I'll hey, Yamin. Jordan for a bit. Yamin, <laughs> thank you. It. Yamin, thank Any you Jordan for the exclusive super... questions. <laughs> yeah. Oh, real quick, Yamin Zine, thank you for the super chat. Uh, he says, evening, Bahagin, Chuck, and everyone. Great to see Jordan, Evelyn. Too many there favorites. One epic stream. Thank you, Yaman. This, uh, this is the great thing about live is, uh, you know, things happen. And <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Exactly. And I just want to say, I just want to real quick say thank you, Yaman, for the super chat. And by the way, the drumstick fund is open. <laughs> you, know, you know how I feel about super chats. Thank you. Uh, you don't have to. Uh, but it motivates us to get on here every Tuesday and do our thing. So uh, thank you, Yaman. Thank you, everybody. Oh, we got Ordinary Filmmaker in the house. Z-Wade is in the house. David Schultz, Ray, and everybody, Mark. So, uh, yeah, that Manny Ortiz review was really good. Um, also, I held the Z8 three days ago, and it felt good in the hands. Uh, you know, I have mm -hmm. big hands. So Yeah, uh, I saw you were talking about that. Yeah, no, we had a good time with uh, Christy Odom, Nikon ambassador was there, mm -hmm. and a few Nikon reps at Sammy's Camera in LA, uh, in Santa Ana, Orange County. And Christy you know, was with me in Yellowstone. She is a delight. Yeah, she talked about you guys. She in talked about terms? in good terms. She she actually, <laughs> okay. you know, we were talking behind the scenes, and uh, and she said that she was commissioned to. To do that video for you guys to uh make that review or, or something like that for the z8 or yeah to set know. up our shooting experience just take care of all the permits and everything like that because oh, okay, okay. in a, a national, national park, park is a little sticky which is why you don't often see us even though we're by banff which is one of the most beautiful places in the world we're not shooting there very often because permits are an absolute nightmare mm -hmm. yeah so yeah she said it was a great time with you guys and uh you know, it was great to just spend time with her and the, and the Z8 and everybody. But, yeah, with me, the battery is not an issue. The being a Z9, smaller Z9 is not an issue. The same sensor, same megapixels, whatever. That's fine. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to get the Z7 III down the road with the big, uh, big, you know, megapixel camera. What do you guys think? Will we? Yeah, they got to address that line like the Z6 to Z7 II, I mean, such a big thing was they're like, it has dual processors in it, so we can add a bunch of really cool features down the road, and I want the 3D tracking interface from the Z8 and Z9. It's so nice to use. Mm -hmm. Whatever they have to do, whether it is a firmware update or a new processor, I just want the experience to be yeah. more like shooting a Z8. I think Z9. they would need to put in a new processor, but at the same time, um, I think, Chuck, you were talking about this uh, a couple days ago, about how the Z7 II is still such a great like landscape portrait, yeah. um, you know, even wedding photographer camera. Um, so if you want like the high resolution, there's one available for you. You just don't maybe necessarily need the super fast shooting, the um, and the, all the processing power. Yeah, and there is still a little bit more dynamic range there. Um, so, you know, landscape shooters who don't need the super high burst rates, Z7 II is still makes a little more sense. I'd just like to see the whole Nikon experience be more consistent uh, throughout, because now it feels like we kind of have two tiers um, of how that yes. autofocus interface works. So, so do you, you know, that said, do you feel like Nikon has finally picked up the pace here? I mean, uh, filling out the full frame uh, uh, lineup is going to be ex uh, the first thing they need to do, and we won't. We don't have to get into that discussion, argument really, with so many other people about all the niche cameras that everybody wants now. But uh, I think that once we see the Z63, I think that is a really big step forward because so many people are waiting for that camera. 
Um, you know, that is the affordable market for so many people. It may not be affordable for everybody, but I think that's a big winner in the Nikon camp to get that Z63 out soon, sooner rather than later. And of course, followed by a Z73 with a higher megapixel sensor. And I think Nikon then has targeted the majority of their audience, their, their, uh, their uh, consumers. Mm -hmm. Well, we've seen the other brands do that in, in a sense, you know, Canon and Sony have both basically put their auto, autofocus systems and a lot of their high end tech in their lower end cameras. So those kind of like entry point to full frame or, or even like you go down, you go down the lineup even more. Um, so I think it's definitely possible. Um, they're just maybe a little bit slower at doing that, but they've really focused on like this top end, but now we got to see them trickle down the, the technology and some of those features. And that's why I say the autofocus interface because stacked sensors are incredibly expensive. Like I don't know how Nikon pulled off $4,000 with a stacked full frame sensor. Uh, so I'm not expecting to see that in the Z6 III, but if we get all the other great stuff, like the huge strides that they've made with, you know, the stabilizer's much better, the video's much better, that EVF experience, those kind of mm -hmm. things, uh, then I think they've got a really compelling camera because everybody's on, you know, version, Canon's on their Mark IIs already in that class. Uh, have, that you, have, you, have you noticed, have you noticed no one talks about that? What you just said about the stack sensor, $4,000, like the... Mm -hmm. People just want to talk about things that, oh, it's the same camera as a Z9. I'm not excited, you know? Mm -hmm. But like, like when one... you position it for what it is and, um, you know, it is, the what did you say? Like the most affordable? Oh, it is the most affordable frame. stacked full frame. I mean, you can get some like, yeah, it's old Sony A9s or something, but that's an old camera at this point. It's a much lower resolution. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and feature wise, you know, those are that's from the Sony dark ages with, terrible interfaces and menus and things uh so yeah i mean in terms of a new product there's nothing close to it and that is a very high performing stacked sensor as well like dynamic range is great on it low light is fantastic it's so, really impressive oh let's read this question by ray uh it says jordan having tested is it 100s of cameras have you a chris what is that <laughs> have you i mean i do have a chris um <laughs> he's been with me for a while um yeah if you want to just rephrase that in the questions but yeah i mean i've oh, oh i think go. he added more to it there we go uh oh designing our own camera i mean we we are trying <laughs> whenever we review something we are giving that feedback to the manufacturers so uh and a lot of the time it's shocking how much if it makes sense for the line, like you've seen this as well, oh, your yeah. feedback gets implemented in future versions. Yeah. And it's fun to, you know, take credit for it. But I, I think a lot of the things that you guys think about, it's like other people would enjoy those features and I'm sure they're listening to it from lots of different users. And, um, yeah, it's great to see, but yeah, you could come up with a good Frankenstein camera. Yeah. Oh, totally. I mean, that might the be a Jordan fun episode for Petapixel is just pick and choose from every manufacturer. What we like, that would be fun. The build a bear concept. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, so we have limited time with Jordan today. So let me let me let me ask this question real quick. Jordan, uh, having used you use a lot of cameras for your video work and, and the, the channel. Uh, how does the Z8 stack up for video quality and autofocus, in your opinion, so far? Or the Z9, Z8 or Z9? Yeah, I mean, I think they're both interchangeable. And I said when the, in our Z8 video towards the end there, like I think in its price, it's the most full featured video camera out there right now. I mean, there's certainly some cameras that'll have advantages as well. Like I, I still love the assist tools on Panasonic's and things, but Panasonic's not shooting 8K video. They're not doing internal raw video and their autofocus is still just, they have two cameras basically with good autofocus performance. Uh, I loved using the Z8, Z9, and it was different for me because I do generally manually focus, but with those two cameras, I was like, all right, stress test, I'm just gonna let it live in autofocus mode. And I really enjoyed shooting with it. I, did Drew shoot your episode on the camera as well? No, no, he okay. didn't. Um, we only had one unit. You guys were spoiled, I think. 
Yeah, but I definitely <laughs> want to do that quite a bit more. And on both cases, uh, like our Z9 review, I also shot on that camera. Um, I just used the 2470 um, Z mount, which is a beautiful lens, oh, I but I really... Lens. I want to play with more of the uh, Z mount lenses, especially some of those one eight primes are beautiful and, you know, and throw a knocked in my bag too. Why the hell not? You know? <laughs> yeah. Why not? <laughs> Make Chris yep. carry it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I got yeah, one. Sure. I'm going to send it to you. <laughs> I, I got to play with it. It was wonderful, but yeah, I haven't shot an episode on it yet. That's the mm, next step. Yeah. 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 Have you seen my knock five videos, Jordan? I got to check those out. No. Yeah. I have a series more, more to come, but I have three on my channel. But uh, Simon says, from Ordinary Filmmaker, Jordan, would, would I be allowed to take the R5 or Z8 into the park for personal use, or would they treat it as a professional camera and not allow it? I mean, I think that's all a matter of, like, we've brought some big cameras in a lot of public places, well, and people aren't generally phased. It's all you know, how you're behaving with it. And, you know, if you want, if you're going to have lighting modifiers or anything like that, of course, you're always going to be... Uh, a lot easier to pick out of a crowd but no they're small enough it looks like they're both manageable bodies that won't draw a lot of attention yeah i mean obviously take a look at the rules for your specific national park in canada we have lots of provincial parks as well and the rules are all a little bit different um usually photo they don't seem to worry so much about it's like when you start rigging stuff out for video i think a lot of parks and other public spaces that's when they start to get a little bit more nervous yeah, and when we've done permits, it's just but the question has been how big is your crew and where are you planning yeah. to go? How many people? You know, if you're a one man band, you're going to get away with a lot more. Brooke Not that we're encouraging you to do that, but you can. <laughs> Brooke Hedge says it's snowing in Canada. No, it's actually been really hot. Um, it's actually been quite smoky where we are because there's a lot of uh, wildfires happening. It's kind of crazy, actually, just how hot and dry and crispy it's been. Um, normally, we get a lot more precipitation around this time of year. Um, but the smoke's been an interesting challenge. Um, it's kind of hard to make <laughs> videos out there when it basically looks like thick fog everywhere and there's like ash floating around, but um, Evan, yeah, no snow. Evan and I have both been testing cameras and like if you want to test dynamic range, uh, that's very difficult to do when everything is covered in smoke and you've got about <laughs> four stops worth of contrast in your shot. Uh, so we'll figure that out. What's your favorite camera and why? Both of you. You go first. Um, well, the camera that I've been shooting with a lot has actually been the the Canon EOS R5. Um, we've had access to one for quite a while. Um, I do a lot of portrait photography, and I find that that camera is great for portrait photography. The autofocus, especially for people, is awesome. Um, I like the files. Um, yeah, what about you, Jordan? I mean, mine is tough because it's going to split directly between photo and video. Mm -hmm. So uh, my favorite photo camera I've ever used was the Fujifilm GFX 100S. Uh, Chris makes fun of me all the time. I love that camera. Uh, not the most practical choice. No, not at all. Jordan's not a very practical guy. But, but I enjoyed that. Like whenever there's a new GFX lens, it's like, yes, I get to shoot with that body again. I always enjoy it. And it mm -hmm. just kind of makes me, you know, then I'll drag out lights and stuff. Because if my camera's this big anyways, I'm going to put some effort into the photos I take. Um, so I would say that probably for photography and then for video, I'm waffling a little, like I love the interface on the Panasonic S5 II X mm -hmm. that's been shooting but most yeah, of our episodes. Yeah, you've been shooting Panasonic for such a long time. So it's like your comfort zone, your, your home place. And a lot of it is the, you know, they optimize all the lenses and everything for video. Mm -hmm. So they have a really nice system there, you know, like, uh, on micro four thirds, they have these like one seven um zooms that there's nothing really like it out there actually one of them's filming us right now as well uh so i do like how panasonic thinks that through but nikon has also been no slouch like i said i loved yeah. shooting with the z8 i want to do more projects with it and play with some different lenses but uh yeah the image from it's beautiful i wasn't a big fan of working with their log format before i found it very difficult to grade and they've clearly tweaked it because uh yeah z8 z9 i found very easy to play with and get nice files out of them what do you, do you shoot on FL, uh, flat picture profile on the uh, Z8? I shot mostly on N log, actually. N -log. Uh, oh. And then when we when got some snow, it's like, well, what am I really gaining here? So then I jumped over to the flat profile, which I've liked for years. That's a great profile. It was just the log I found I struggled with. Mm -hmm. But now that seems, or I'm a better colorist now. That's that could possible. Have something to do I don't with know. It. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Craig, Craig would love to know this because he's asked me a couple of times i don't remember craig 
uh, with the grip has rubber dials on the grip. I don't know. Do you guys know? Oh, I haven't seen the grip. I oh, okay. Chris Chris despises battery grips. Um, so we had one when we were in Yellowstone, um, and we took it out and we shot a clip of B-roll with it attached to the camera. But I prefer a smaller body when I'm shooting, so I just swapped batteries while I was out there. So I honestly haven't had much time with the um, grip, and I didn't get one with our Z8 review sample. So I might have to swing by the camera store, grab a grip and see how that feels. That might be the next step. Yeah, I'll yeah. see if we can get an answer while we're still on here with you. Um, that was for Craig, right? Yeah, Craig. Uh, Cornell, uh, Cornwell, Cornwall. Uh, I can tell you that I've previously owned the 600 F4 FL lens. And I can tell you that the Z9 with that lens performs very well. Um, so I don't think the Z8 w would perform Oh, same way. I mean, I think the ZA will perform the same way. But, um, but um, hey, how do you guys? Uh, how's your chemistry like? Do you guys talk about? Because you guys are from different channels right now. So how's it at home with you guys? Do you guys talk photography at home, or is it just family life, or what is it? No, we do, and like our our lives are so integrated into this that I mean, obviously our BFFs are um, Chris and his wife Erin, so we spend a lot of time together. So we do tend to to talk a lot about gear and photography, and um, but it's just kind of like second nature. It's like talking about you know what you're cooking for dinner, like how the weather is. It's just part of our our lives. Yeah, it's not just a job. Like we're actually interested in it and bounce mm -hmm. each other, thoughts off of each other. But yeah, I mean a lot of vacations or if we go on a trip or something. We'll both have two different products that we're reviewing and, you know, fighting over who we, gets to take pictures of the kids at that moment in front of what backdrop. Yeah, we have had um, some t certain situations where maybe Jordan's family or, or someone from my family says like, oh, hey, you guys should go and shoot this location for your show. And then the other person will be like, wait a minute, I want to shoot there. <laughs> you don't get dibs. So we sometimes have to take turns on those types of opportunities. Um, but generally speaking, it, it works out pretty well. And like we said earlier in the show, uh, we're able to help each other out in so many ways. And again, I think that it would be really tough to have a partner um, or, you know, a spouse that that wasn't part of this if you if you worked in this space. And I don't know, maybe you guys can attest to that. Well, I know Chuck's answer, but uh... no, no, my, my wife no. can stand about two minutes of photography talk and then that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, like, it's yeah, it's harder maybe to to have it as integrated as it is in into our lives. Well, and even before YouTube, like we met at camera stores, and you know our first we're dates were out taking pictures. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's we kind of built a relationship on photo and video to a degree. Yeah, yeah that's and our cool. kids are kind of into it too, which is funny. <laughs> <laughs> our oldest one wants to be on YouTube so badly, and actually he did a couple reviews for a DP Review TV. So yeah. great. Hey, Simon over at Ordinary Filmmakers talking about the S1H2. He's looking forward to that when it comes out. How do you – I, I thought that might spike your attention, Jordan. <laughs> oh, big time. I mean, I shot with the S1H for quite a while. I haven't been using it as much because the S5 2X does have the better autofocus mm -hmm. on it. Uh, which I'm actually using more than I expected to. It is really nice when we're just framing up a walk and talk to let the camera do all the work. Um, but yes, the S5 2X, I'm hoping we see a big update on it because they've been using that same Sony 24 megapixel sensor from the Z6 to, um, you know, the Z6, the A7 III. What was that now? Seven years ago or something like that. So I'm yeah. really hoping we see a new sensor, hopefully something stacked. Um, and the nice autofocus from the S5 2X. Uh, like I said, I love their lens lineup. So I would, I'd be using that all the time, I think. So fingers crossed. It's hey, due. Hey, jo Jordan, I have a question for you. Uh, how, uh, can you touch up on the uh, DP reviewed Petapixel thing? Um, when you first found out, you know, your feelings and what, what happened? How did, how did, did Petapixel contact you or what? you know, a little bit more insight on that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we found out shortly before the announcement that they were going to be, uh, yeah, Amazon just said, look, we'll stop producing stuff on April 10th and then give people a little bit of time to archive the site, uh, you know, kind of go through it all, save what needs, you know, mostly text because all of the widgets like the studio scene would be broken. 
and then it's all shut down. So um, it's funny, we heard that, and then for years, my friend Jaron Schneider, who's the mm -hmm. editor in chief at Petapixel, has been like, hey, you know, uh, you guys might want to, might enjoy it over here a little bit. Uh, we'd certainly be happy to have that conversation. Um, so yeah, after I got the news, I was like, hey, you know, no, no reason or anything, Jaron, but uh, <laughs> how are things going yeah. over there at Petapixel? And uh, he was just, yeah, Kinda very, got the ball rolling. yeah, quickly. and he, he was very keen to bring us over. Uh, Michael, the owner, has been great to work with. So it was a fairly smooth transition. We kind of went right from producing videos for DP Review over to Petapixel. And I, I can't talk about it yet. One of the big things that excited us to move over is we're doing a massive documentary project that is not released yet um, that I've been working on for two months at this point. It's unlike anything we've done before. It's very cool. I think photographers are going to be very excited. And it's that kind of project mm -hmm. that got me kind of, I mean, Ev knows what's up a little bit, you know. So. No, I'm sure. Well, what, I'm I was sure. Gonna, what I was going to say on the, the Petapixel side, what I've witnessed actually is um, I think the guys have had like a little bit of a creative spark from it, like starting something new, even though they're kind of following like their same format. They're really trying to still appeal to their loyal um, base of followers. Um, but at the same time, I think any time that you can start creating for somebody else, you have some different people that are involved on the editorial side. Um, it's really nice to see you guys kind of get that extra little jolt of excitement um i want to say back into the show <laughs> but it's you know when you're creating like two episodes a week um i mean you you know um it it's it takes a lot out of you it's it takes a lot of energy it takes a lot of creative ability and um and of course when there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen saying like what you can do what's what the options are mm -hmm. um that can sometimes suck some of the fun out of it so it's nice to see that that petapixel has has added that future. so you get you you yeah. guys have a crew right like somebody edits the video somebody writes a script or... <laughs> no. you you do everything you edit too I, I do edit, um, oh, okay. I, so I, I shoot and edit the show most of the time, but I have been, you know, watching over the years, I've been hosting some episodes now. So Chris has actually really developed as a videographer oh, yeah. um, because of that. But yeah, it's just the two of us um, for that larger documentary project. The editor, Jaron, was out there and it was great to have an extra person. Uh, that's something that we miss a lot of the time. But what do you uh, yeah, use it's, to edit? it's the two of us. What do you use? You know, it's funny. We just dropped an episode talking about Final Cut. I've been cutting on Final Cut for, I don't know, a decade and a half, I think, at this point. Oh, yeah. I think since I've known you, you've been using Final Cut. Yeah. Uh, now, there are some projects where I have to go, you know, if there's a raw video format that's not supported in Final Cut, I'll cut in Resolve, and I really like it. It's great software, but I can just work fastest in Final Cut at this point. What, what's your main, wonderful what's your, for photos. What's your main camera right now that you use for videos? It's, it's tough to say. Um, so I would say the S5-2X is my current primary camera. I use the GH6 all the time. But also, I always ask manufacturers when we've got a new camera, hey, if you can spare two, I would love to film the episode on it. So I do get a chance to use oh, yeah, yeah, everybody's yeah. video equipment. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's not a manufacturer who once in a while won't send us two. Uh, so that's great too, because I can always see what other companies are offering, you know, really get a feel for how the footage handles in the real world. You know, you can learn a lot from shooting a chart, but you learn a lot more by going out in a bright, sunny day and trying to get a usable image out of a camera. Quick question. Does, uh, are you like, how close are you with Chris? Like, are you guys buddy, buddy, like you guys buddies or are you guys just working colleagues or we are buddy buddies? Absolutely. I mean, we, we do play up the antagonistic relationship a little bit. I like the uh, thing that like on YouTube, everybody is themselves plus 20%. So I'm 20% mm -hmm. more irritated with Chris on the YouTube channel than I am in real life. <laughs> But they're they're yeah. like family, honestly. Like we do all of our like holidays together because a lot of the time we try to like incorporate a little bit of them being able to shoot when we're on holidays. So like in September, um, we went to California and we just like yeah we we do everything. And then during COVID, they were like our only friends that we saw on a regular basis because they were still shooting. So we're like okay, well our two families can hang out. So again, like our kids hang out together. Like yeah, they're as close as you could probably get. Yeah. Cool. That's awesome. What kind of like is he? Um, what kind of guy is he? Like off the camera. I mean, you you should get him on the show. He is very much who he 
appears to be on YouTube, especially like if you look at some of the things where we have guests on the show or honestly, the drunk best and worst episodes every year are really good. If, like if you watch one of those, you get a pretty good idea of what Chris is like. Yeah, he's a pretty funny guy. Has some serious elements to him too. And then of course he really likes fly fishing, um, which Jordan does not. Um, so those two hobbies haven't been <laughs> lined up as, as well as That is the one way we do not mesh. They could be, but um, yeah. yeah, you guys so, get on pretty good. Yeah, no, I put in a good word for the show. You know, I'd love to have him on. Um, what are you, you watch other YouTube channels, you know? Yeah, we do. Um, you know, it's funny because I think when, uh, you know, a few years ago, a lot of the time you would want to watch what everybody was doing um, con more consistently because they would kind of be like our friends. Like we would see them on a lot of these like press trips and that um, where like Jordan was saying earlier, a, a lot of the time I try to wait until like we've released our content just so that it doesn't like muddy the water in terms of what your viewpoint is and certain things that you're going to say. Cause it's amazing how quickly that can kind of get into your head and create some of those biases. Um, but usually after the fact, I'll see like what everybody did at least like scrub through. There's so, there's so much content out there. Um, but yeah, we definitely have some favorites. Yeah, I, I definitely, after we've published a video, I have to admit, I will go check Gordon Lang and Gerald Undone and make sure that I've actually gotten everything correct. Those are, <laughs> I would say, two of the best testers out there. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, we didn't really mention it, but it looks like DP Review is still you know they're still going i don't know if they found a yeah, buyer richard, or what's going richard on richard did a great uh video on the the z8 um it was really nice to see he did like a cute little homage to the guys as well so that was nice um we also really love uh ted forbes um the art of photography his channel is awesome i love how he talks about um like not just gear but a lot of the time he really gets into like photography he talks about books and um so his channel is just kind of a, a fun watch and um yeah he's he's great on camera yeah, tech, and tech, I, tech. it's tough because I know all of these people from press trips and things. So you feel like you should be watching all their stuff to see what's going on. But the honest truth is, and everyone knows this, is like we're not going to see all of everybody's videos. There's no way. Of course. There's not enough course. time in the day. Um, tech stuff aside, as far as creativity goes, creative, because I know a lot of guys out there that are very creative on YouTube, more creative than the tech talk. Uh, I bring up um, Peter McKinnon, you know. Mm -hmm. He's oh, very, yeah. very, you guys ever meet Peter? We have you guys have. No, I we actually haven't met Peter yet. Um mm -hmm. but I, I do remember that was you know one of the easily the biggest come out of nowhere on YouTube that we've seen. And yeah, I I love the idea of working storytelling into episodes. He's a great photographer. But it's funny, he's another Canadian, but we just haven't yeah. seen him on anything That's right. speaking of canadians um there's actually two other creators that are based in calgary that have big channels so one of them <laughs> nice m ms <laughs> one of them is irene rudnick uh, she's another canon photographer and her stuff is all about creativity she does these amazing portraits um really unique style but um, she's based right here in our city of calgary um, and then another one on the more techie side is tyler stallman um, and he is a canon shooter but he does a little bit of everything he does a lot of apple products reviews that too yep. um but we always kind of joke that our little uh, neck of the woods has a lot of great content creators that's cool yeah you guys rush fans man i love rush jordan yeah jordan took me to a rush concert uh years ago and he's he was a prog rock fan yeah, yeah no, i, 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 I am a drummer so so it's oh, mandatory he's a drummer. Did yeah. you know that? let's go baby uh, na, 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 not to that level <laughs> <laughs> not, yeah. No, can't can't do a lot of Neil covers. No. <laughs> no, man, I love Rush, Canadian to Toronto. You know, uh, Getty Lee. Getty Lee is into photography. You know that, right? He's a. I've I think he's a, too, yeah. Yeah, he's a he's a wildlife kind of guy. <laughs> hey guys, this, the link is in the stream, um, the chat. So if you guys want to come in on camera and ask a question. Uh, we'd be happy to have you, the fans, on. Uh, ask a question. Uh, there's the link. You could even do it with your iPhone. Just click on the link and uh, come in and ask your question for Evelyn and Jordan Drake. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there was a question on here about competitiveness. Uh, let's see. Mm. Here we go. <laughs> Is there any sort of competitiveness between you two being on two different channels? 
Hmm, that's a very interesting question. Um, I think, so early on, when I d and my partner Dave took over the TCS TV, it was terrifying. We thought we were gonna like be eaten alive. But actually, it was really nice because Chris and Jordan obviously endorsed us, and, um, and the audience was very receptive. So people kept saying like, you're gonna have to have a really thick skin, people are gonna be brutal. Uh, we even did like a training video on it, uh, which you can see from, from about six years ago. But uh, they've actually been really good. Now, as far as competitiveness goes, again, with like locations and gear and yes. that kind of thing, I mean, sometimes it can be it can be tough, you know. Like you're you're going up against if someone Jordan and get, <laughs> if someone gets access to something earlier than the other person, that can get a little bit touchy for sure. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, locations absolutely. And honestly, a lot of the time it's you know a point that's made. Like uh, Ev will be showing me a video, mm -hmm. and there will be something in there like oh no she's right she talked about that and i totally forgot to and that's like a big thing that we missed Go so, you know, sometimes that means there will be a pickup but <laughs> uh a lot of the time too it's like you know there it gives people a reason check out both channels because we're going to look at stuff differently yeah uh, and i would say like i would almost think that we would have more points of contention over like overdoing the channels but we kind of have different audiences and a little bit of different objectives at this stage and what we do for YouTube. Um, but I know sometimes it can be, it can be a bit of a challenge. And of course, because of Jordan and Chris and who they are, I always have to remember that, you know, we kind of, we took their audience. We kind of have a little bit more of like a Canadian focus now. Um, we're focused on like the camera store and, and being able to share some stuff about gear and less about like becoming big YouTube, you, big YouTubers like these guys are. Yeah, no, that's cool. Let me let me give you guys a scenario real quick. NDA for one of your channels. All right, one <laughs> of them's left out. So what do you yeah. do? Do you do you talk about it at home? No, right. <laughs> we try not to. Um, a lot of the time, yeah. we play a little bit of this like tiptoe game of um, like, do you know something? Do you have know you something? had a meeting? Anything and we try like to that? yeah, we try to figure out that make sure that we're both at least on the same NDAs uh, before we talk about stuff because I mean sometimes it is very sensitive information and um, and sometimes details are a little bit misconstrued at those early stages because um, they try to really protect their their information on the technology. Ah, cool. I also feel like they've kind of changed the way that they do launches. There used to be a lot of these big press events all the time and that's mm -hmm. becoming less and less common. We're seeing more like with the Z8, uh, what you saw on the Petapixel channel where they're like, Chris and Jordan, you guys go down to Yellowstone and we'll have a camera there for you. Uh, and in those situations, it's like, um, going to Yellowstone Ave, so maybe we should, <laughs> you know, make sure the schedule's in order and figure out sitters and stuff like that. Yeah, but again, uh, we have that understanding that sometimes there is going to be information that we're not privy to until we can, you know, play that game a little bit, figure out who knows what, and then we can... Sometimes Ev will come home with a notebook and she'll be like, I know something you don't know, and that's, you know... <laughs> Yes. Those NDAs are serious. You don't want to be in violation of them. So, speaking of NDAs, like speaking of NDAs, there is uh, Thomas Heaton from Europe. Yep. Uh, did Good you dude. did you see, did you see that what he did on one of his videos? No. What did he do? He gave hints that he has an NDA product. <laughs> oh no. Um, oh. Yeah, like uh, it was just uh, everybody. Oh, that's the Z8. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah. Chuck. Chuck. Yeah. Can you? I think yeah. it works if you put out the announcement, man. People are shy. Here's the link. Yeah, and somebody needs to jump in here because I hate to say it, folks, but I'm going to have to run. So uh, that's part yeah, of what I'm working on. Yeah, we're running out of time on. too. So uh, no, we got we got a little bit here. Yeah, we got. I'm 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 good on the clock. I'm good on the clock. <laughs> but uh, so. hey, it was so great to meet uh, you, uh, Jordan, and you, Evelyn. And and the only thing I want to leave you with is I know Jordan's passion is in the video side more so than the uh, photo or still side. What what's your passion, video or stills? For me. For you, it's yes. Still we got to talk. We got to yeah. talk to Evelyn. I mean, <laughs> let's let Evelyn get a word in. Yeah, I would say still photography. I mean, my passion is more with portrait photography. So I have a website for some of my portrait work. Um, and that's what I do on my spare time when I'm not <laughs> working for the camera store, making YouTube videos and that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, I've been getting more into video, though. It's kind of funny. Like, I love storytelling and um, and 
kind of putting together more video projects for different things. Um, I've learned a little bit of video editing as well. So Jordan's been teaching me Final Cut. Um, so that's been that's been kind of nice. And um, well, that's great. Yeah, we always so, shoot a variety of stuff, though. So share your uh, your portrait uh, site. Yeah, can oh, you just drop it in the it chat in? there? It's yeah. just Evelyn Drake Photography. I want I want to check it out. Okay, great. Yeah. I've got to check it out. Thank you. All right, V, thanks for letting me jump in here late and leave early. No problem. <laughs> I know you're going to dock my pay, but that's okay. Hey, uh, Evelyn, uh, Jordan, thank you both uh, for allowing me to come in and share some of this with you. You guys are great, both of you, both channels. I really appreciate what you do, and I know the challenge of trying to keep up with everything so that you can keep everybody informed. So thank you. Great Thanks. to meet you. Thanks so much, Chuck. See you, Chuck. All right. So, guys, what do you think of this thing right here? Have you, have you played with it? What is... No, I haven't. Uh, I've always meant to... We haven't used a 360 camera since Nikon Key Mission 360 <laughs> that we, dro well, we dropped in the Bow River. But They're pretty cool, actually. A uh, figure skater that we photographed for the... I guess it was the Canon r8 review um she had a 360 camera and she was doing some crazy stuff on like natural ponds um and i think it's a really creative video tool yeah it's, what do you it's think amazing. Amazing. it's i just got it it's the 360 sent it to me uh it's the x3 which this thing is i saw the videos on youtube i was like what the heck is going on here you know the tech in this thing is just amazing like wow i mean you can do some creative shots with this jordan wow Well, and it makes so much sense like I mean, for live music or something like that or anything you can't predict like i was just um kayaking down a lagoon the other day and a beaver popped out right beside me and i would have loved to have had a 360 cam there because i could have actually caught it as opposed to pulling my phone out and totally missing it. Uh, so yeah. things like that, I think it makes a ton of sense. So it's, it's certainly something I'd like to um, test out. And it's, it's a matter as well of just priorities. Our bread and butter is, you know, mirrorless enthusiast cameras. So that'll always push anything like that to the side a little bit. And a lot of video gear that I would love to test as well. You know, I'm always pushing for like cinema lenses and things like that, but it's a smaller audience for it. So I got to pick and choose my battles a little bit yeah with me it's like you know we're photographers first so it's like we're always like you said looking at the slrs mirrorless cameras this and that and then when you know I, I started paying attention to these these kind of you know gadgets i was like whoa man i was like this blew me away you know the selfie stick you can't even see it you know it's like why it looks like drone shots <laughs> like it's crazy mm. man yeah, would you ever use something like that for like concert photography? You sh uh, yeah, sure. If, if, if what I've seen online, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm I can't wait to try it out. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's really cool. Um, yeah, I can't wait. It's like 500 bucks. This thing X3. So, um, yeah. So, I don't know. You know, it's a 360 degree view. I mean, the stabilization on here, like you can shake it, and it's still like, you know, you're still in the mm -hmm. shot. It's 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 nuts. So, hang it over top of a drum kit, uh, right in front of your in front of someone's face. That'd look very cool. Yeah, definitely. Um, so what, like, you guys have worked for two different channels. Is there any direction you guys are um, heading towards? Like, any changes in what, like, the videos you guys are gonna produce in the future? Anything you want to share? Well, you've mentioned you have some special projects that you're working on and you're going to see some different stuff from Petapixel in the near future. Yeah. And I'm really hoping that kind of turns into like if this doc we're working on does well, that'll open the door to more of those kind of projects, which would be really nice. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what, what's happening with Camera Store. Yeah, I think we're looking to do a little bit more short form content just because we see there's a demand out there, um, like whether it's one minute reviews or um, or just creating some short content from our long form reviews. And then I also would like to do more uh, features, so photographer features. Uh, we did a bunch of them before COVID and then during lockdown, we kind of stepped away from doing that for obvious reasons. Um, but 
we're going to try to get more of those going. And then on our side, we do lots of live streaming as well. So we try to bring on different photographers and, uh, and do like tech talks, similar to what we're doing today. Um, but it's always nice to hear different perspectives and um, try to bring a lot more of that to TCS TV. Do you guys have uh, a set time for your live streams or is it just no random? it's not we often do them on thursday nights at 7 p.m mountain daylight time um but it varies depending on kind of what's going on and if it's a camera launch we'll move it to the launch day that kind of thing mm, okay that's cool uh sorry for not knowing this but you the the, the camera store is an actual camera shop Yes, or so the, the camera okay, store okay. Uh, uh, was, uh, it started in 1996 mm -hmm. and um, with uh, Peter Jun, and then he quickly added a, um, a partner, P uh, Julian Ferrara. And um, so they've been having like a one location brick and mortar store that like ships across Canada um, for, I guess it'd be like 27 years. Um, and uh, Jordan and I both started there in 2006. And then shortly after that, um, him and Chris started just kind of you know, mucking around and making some little videos around the store. Uh, they did a store tour video and then that kind of propelled the YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, Andy has a question. Jordan, have you tried IRIX or Siriu lenses for Z? I haven't tried the IRIX class yet. Uh, that's something that I'm looking to do. This is when we're saying like, I would love to do more cine glass. Um, I'd like to play with some more of those brands. Um, I have messed around with the Saray Anamorphics a little bit, um, but I haven't used any of their ones with a bigger squeeze factor. So uh, that's another one I would love to try out here in the future with Petapixel. Um, I love the look of Anamorphic. Uh, it's actually fun for photography as well. If you ever get a chance to mess around with that, you'll have to de-squeeze it yourself in Photoshop or whatever, but it is a very cool, interesting perspective. Uh, very wide, but without that barrel distortion you'd get if you shot with an ultra wide angle lens. So they're fun. Um, and yeah, and hopefully I'll get a chance to play with those. It's kind of right now, there's just this barrage of major announcements. So I'm not getting to play with any of the small fun stuff I want to on the Petapixel channel, but hopefully we'll be able to soon. Uh, Jordan, how, uh, Christian asks, Jordan, how would you recommend starting into video? Ooh, trying to recreate scenes from a movie. That's a, that's a fun way to do it. I mean, honestly, I would say the easiest thing that I always tell people is go make a um, little musical montage of just like take a day, you know, and don't make a vlog where you're talking to camera. Just try to tell a story, you know, shoot it. Very simple scenes. Um, don't even worry about exposure off the top and then put it together in editing. Yeah. I think that's something that will get you excited to do it instead of getting bogged down with all, there's so many technicalities in video. Yeah. There's a lot of cameras and tools that make it a lot easier that you don't necessarily have to have as an extensive video background. Um, but I, I think one thing that you were told many years ago is like, start with the basics and learn how to light stuff because light is so important for both photo and video. Um, but if you can learn how to, to light with constant lighting, you know, take something like a piece of fruit or an avocado or whatever and light it in any possible way that you can. And then that will really help your vision and, and help you to see the light. Oh, yeah. Wow. I got that feedback on a short film very early on and took it to heart. I was like, what do you think of the film? And they're like, the lighting's terrible in it. Um, and then that's something I've really focused on and it's been nice. I've been able to be a cinematographer on a couple of short films and I really enjoy that. That's something I would love to get back to doing at some point. Um, but we're generally out shooting our show in the field, so I don't get to play with that as much as I would like. So even this is nice. Hey, we got a light in here today. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys use your iPhones for any clips out on location sometimes? <laughs> Well, it's interesting that you, that you mentioned that because um, sometimes for little B-roll clips and stuff like that, we definitely use our phones. Um, and then there's also some tools um, like to record menus in that where Jordan actually plugs it into his phone. So what is that thing? The the Zion? Uh, the Axum. Axum. Uh, is a Axum. great way to plug it into your, into your camera, record the menus. Uh, like it's great for teaching and stuff like that. I really love that. But uh, it's actually surprising how much, you know, Chris will be jumping out of the car to get a shot or something like that. My camera's in the back. I will still pull out an iPhone and then, you know, spend a little bit of time trying to get it to match the look of the rest of the video. But the quality is very good on them. I mean, that's why I've kind of 
stuck with iPhone for a little while. I really like the video quality on those. Yeah, and if you're shooting in 4K and you make sure that you have that those settings on your phone, it'd be really hard for someone to really tell the difference between when you're shooting with that, as long as it's you know well lit and. Um, I th but I think the key thing is, is when you upgrade to a camera, you're able to control more and do more with it and, and yeah. have different lenses and that kind of thing. So, but that um, image stabilization, do a good job though. Yeah. That image stabilization on that, man, it's like, it is, it, it's so good, but there's is. a trade off there too, to get that really good digital stabilization. It has to use a fast shutter speed. So your motion's always going to look wonky. There's no real way yeah. around that. Um, <laughs> So yeah. there's still room for gimbals and optical stabilization. Yeah. Uh, come on, guys. Uh, we we got to have at least one caller today. Here's the link again. Don't be shy. Like I said, there's 73 people watch, 75 people watching this stream right now. So hit that like button. Uh, we got another 10 minutes. So uh, click on the link, join the chat, ask the question. Um, do you use, uh, do you guys use uh, ND filters out and about? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big fan of actually using set ND filters. I'm not a big fan of variable NDs because as you're changing exposure, you're also shifting your reflections. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, shooting through a piece of glass or you got water in the shot, shifting your exposure, suddenly you've lost that effect. So I do use, um, generally I'll just go out with a two stop, a three stop and a um, polarizer. Uh, I've got a really nice magnetic set from um, yeah. Michael the Maven, the Maven mm -hmm. filters that I, I love. Uh, yeah, those really magnetic good. filters are awesome. Make it That's really quick and easy to answer. swap. Because uh, my big problem was always speed. You know, a variable ND filter is great because you can quickly adjust exposure. But um, yeah, yeah, I don't love the look of it. So now that I've got fixed yeah. NDs that I can swap in and out very quickly, I've really been enjoying that. Free will. Because I will not shoot with fast shutter speeds. I'm still an old man when it comes to that. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I like to keep my shutter speeds down too. Like, uh, you're doing 30 frames per second, it's 60, right? Like, double yeah, your shutter you speed. Double your shutter speed. I, I want to have slower frame rates. I have a question. If you're doing like, could you guys shoot in 4K and edit in 4K? Or, or can you give us a little mm -hmm. insight on? the best quality, like what people should do, shoot in 4K, downsize, you know, all the talk on yeah, like I, putting it into Final Cut and this and that. Just a real quick tutorial, like. <laughs> quick tutorial. <Drew>. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it's been a real process because as computers get better and better, um, th there's less requirements to, you know, kind of scale things back when you're working on them. Like and Ev's working on a M1 um macbook air and that's totally going to be fine for cutting and exporting you know bringing 4k footage into a 4k timeline exporting it to youtube at 4k you know it's mm -hmm. it's going to handle that without breaking a sweat uh we when we shot the z8 video i shot that in 8k and that oh. was stressing my workflow a little bit uh we've got mm -hmm. a video coming out soon for the inspire 3 drone which yeah. shoots 8k as well same thing there. But it's uh, interesting because your laptop is actually more powerful than your desktop. So, uh, but they're only about what, a year apart of when you bought them? Yeah, things are just moving so fast on the Apple processors right now. Yeah, that my iMac is substantially slower. So it's kind of funny. I'll use the iMac for doing, you know, emails, photo editing and things like that. And then I'll hunch over the laptop when I'm, uh, when I'm processing the big files like that 8K video. But I mean, always, if your computer can handle it, shoot higher resolution than what you're gonna export it as, you will get more detail at the end of the day doing that. Hi, Brian. Hey, Dad. Hey, Brian, how are you? Thanks okay, for how you doing? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Baltimore, Maryland. Nice, nice. Do you have a question for everyone's Evelyn got these Z8 hats? Yeah, I was gonna say. I, I just thought no one, no one was, no one was walking in to say hi to everyone. So I thought I would do it, and I thought since Bahagas got his Z hat one, I check it with my Z hat one that I got Friday okay. at a touch and play with the Z8 event. So there we are. <laughs> nice. I'd love nice. to know your thoughts on it. I got to play with it for a grand total of maybe four minutes. I love it. I pre-ordered it right after uh, the launch video, what, on the 10th. Uh, I got my MPS notification. I get to pick it up Thursday. Um, I already have a Z9, which I absolutely love. and absolutely love the Z8. And what I've been telling everybody, owning both the Z8 and the Z9 is kind of like having two different size hammers in your toolbox. 
both could do the same job, but each are better for different situations of banging something into the wood or whatever. Uh, you know, it uh, feels obviously it's smaller than the Z9, uh, but a little bit smaller than the D850, and probably close to uh, a D300, I felt, but uh, mm -hmm. really looking forward to it. I mean, I already, I already have an event I'm using it for on Saturday. So, awesome. Excellent. Awesome. Well, and it's not going to be a learning curve coming from a Z9. That's yeah. one of the nice things, too. They'll be totally interchangeable. Yeah, it's, it's going to be, I mean, it's going to be a piece of cake. Uh, I think uh, it, it's well worth looking. People that are on the fence trying River uh, at the event, uh, you know, a lot of people uh, have not used any of the Z cameras or Z cameras. Uh, I, I switched back and forth between the two. Um, people are asking questions. I, I wound up asking a lot more, answering a lot more questions, I think, than uh, really playing with it. Um, and a lot of people got excited. So I think for my you know, local uh, camera store, lucky to have uh, a brick and mortar, full fledged photography store eight and a half miles from my house. Nice. It's getting rare now, Pretty which uh, they're, they are great. Uh, I mean, shout out to everybody you knows service photo. Uh, the guys there are phenomenal. Nice. Excellent. They're great. All right, Brian. Well, thanks for joining us. Thanks for saying hello. You're welcome. Yeah, enjoy your new camera this week. Thanks. Uh, it's, uh, A couple more sleeps. It's going to be fun. <laughs> and rock and roll. <laughs> rock and roll. <laughs> thanks, brother. Good okay, brother. Bye. Bye. Uh, I have a question for you real quick. Uh, so for you guys, uh, anyone of you guys. Um, so uh, I was shooting the other day a, a show, a live show, and I was experiencing a lot of flicker and, and, and uh, uh, banding mm -hmm. on the, with the Z9 with the LED lights on stage. Um, have you tr tried, have you messed with that on like concert videography and stuff like that? Do the settings improve the flicker? Because I haven't really messed with it yet. The, you know, the Z9 we, has we a certain with dial. That with, um, in, like for sports photography and, mm. um, and utilizing the anti-flicker mode. It, a lot of the time it has to do with, yeah, exactly what kind of lighting you're fighting against. Yeah, it, it's difficult. I do like that they've added the thing to scan it and it'll do its best to offset that. But it is, uh, Richard on DP Review did a wonderful article about like, the thing is, if something is scanning pixels top to bottom, then any of that banding is going to have a very clear cutoff. Like a mechanical shutter will give you banding with some um, LED lights, uh, video panels, things like that. The difference is it's a physically swinging shutter, so it blurs a little bit, um, that effect, which makes it a little less noticeable. Um, so most of the time you should be able to offset it because that sensor scans so fast, but there will be situations where it's not able to, and a mechanical shutter would give you the same it would give you the same banding, but a different look to it. It mm -hmm. would be less jarring, the actual edge of where that's happening. So that's something I'm really hoping we'll see sort out. I mean, as, as read speeds get faster and faster, it's going to become less and less common. Also, you know, people are making huge strides in LED lighting and screen mm -hmm. technology. As that old stuff goes away, especially mm -hmm. like, you know, live theater and stuff, you use a bunch of old, terrible lights that are always causing problems. It's going to become less and less of an issue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we were having trouble actually finding um, places when we did the Z, our Z9 content um, to, to actually showcase the, the flickering in that because so many of the, the bigger sports arenas and that kind of thing have upgraded their lighting. So it doesn't become as much of an issue. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, we look at like the AP journalists are all using, you know, Sony stacked sensor cameras. Now they're going to want to accommodate those people. They're not going to want banding in those images. Uh, so that's going to get better and better, but it's, it's going to be there. I mean, how I test the rolling shutter speeds of cameras is I find a high frequency light and I take a photo or record video and figure out how fast it's reading out. You know, um, it is a limitation of it until we move to global shutters. One day. Now, <laughs> when you when you guys shoot your content, is it do you guys shoot in thirty pre twenty four thirty or sixty majority of the time? Ooh, 
<laughs> okay, so my team has actually been shooting pretty much everything in 60p. Um, so we have we have a videographer Drew, and um, and he said he's really liking the look of working with 60p. I mean, I think it um, it, it seems to be working well for YouTube. Um, so I know that's one thing you always have to consider is whatever you're outputting your video work to, um, you sometimes have to experiment. I don't know if you see the same thing um, to see like what what's going to look best. Yeah, it, I think it's subconsciously wired into all of us. You know, going back to old TV, it was like, you know, sports and soap operas were at 60 frames per second. Television shows were at 30 frames per second. Movies were at 24. And there is still a subconscious switch, I think. You know, it might be real. it might be less now for younger people who have been watching, you know, YouTube and streaming their whole lives. But it's the mood that I'm going for. When I shot the camera store TV, it was 30 frames per second for a long time because I wanted it to look like a TV show uh, was my goal. We but moved over to 24 frames per second because when 4K came out, most cameras couldn't record 4K 30. So it's yeah. like, OK, let's move the show to 4K 24. <laughs> Um, and then we'll be able to demonstrate all these high-res cameras. But I really love the look of it, and I've stuck with 4K24 since then. Yeah, it's kind of your trademark but, a little bit. But last question before we run, uh, real quick. Is it okay to record in 60 and export to 24 when wanting that film look, or do you shoot at 24 when wanting that so, film look? Yeah, so if you shoot at 60 using the classic you know, double-year shutter speed thing, uh, all it's going to do is throw frames away. And what that's going to give you is a whole 24 frames per second, but shot at a very fast shutter speed. So you'll get kind of a jerky look to your motion if you do that. Um, now, what you can do that uh, a lot of people will do is shoot at 60 frames per second at a 60th of a second, and then you can export it at 30 frames per second, and it'll look perfect, just like you shot it at, at 30 okay. frames originally. But if you want to do a little bit of slow-mo, you can actually slow that footage down. Uh, so that's a cool little <laughs> trick for doing it. But yeah. ideally, I always shoot in the frame rate I'm delivering in, and then I go to other frame rates if I want slow-mo for some reason. That's cool. Hey, Andy. Oh, Andy, good job. Nice. <laughs> How you doing, guys? <laughs> I like his hat better. <laughs> hey, Andy. I like the crafty um, look, yeah. How are you, Andy? I'm good. Uh, they, we're, we have them for a limited time. They're going to have to run. But if you, wanna, if you want to put in a question or so, a comment. Yeah, so, so my question is, and I keep hearing this, and you guys are cinema guys, etc. Nikon doesn't make a cinema body because it doesn't have shutter angle and false color and all of this stuff. Does that is that something you really need or you can't do the math of taking the frames rate and dividing by the by the shutter <laughs> the by you ask, I, think, <laughs> it, it, I mean it's a nice to have we made one of my favorite intros we ever made for dp review was about when i'm jumping between frame rates and forget to switch my shutter speed back to where it should be i mean no it's not incredibly complicated math i'm sure like you know my eight-year-old would have no problem figuring out the right shutter speed for different <laughs> frame rates. Well, you've ingrained that into him, though. Yeah, well, that, we've been doing class since he was four. Yeah, of course. So what about um, false color? What false about color false is, color? again, it's, it's a nice to have. Um, yeah. I don't use it very much because I can't have false color up while I'm rolling. Um, that's why I really prefer having waveforms for exposure. It's off to the side. I can check it if I need to, just like a histogram. False yeah. color is great when you're setting up a shot, but I'm going to turn it off because I don't want to look at a weird, gross screen covered in primary colors while I'm actually mm -hmm. filming. So that's less of a necessity for me. You know, yeah. My ideal camera will have shutter angles because I'm easily confused and uh, waveforms, which is my preferred way to meter a scene. And I wish we'd see that for photography as well. There's no reason you couldn't use them for that. Um, but uh, like yeah, it's an absolute nice yeah. to have. And I'm thrilled yeah. that Nikon put waveforms in the yeah. Z8, Z9. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Andy, I just saw Z8 on your hat. Oh, that's cool. Well, you know, I didn't get the job <laughs> lot order that you guys obviously did. And of, and of course, Jordan, and your, uh, are, are you the guy with the twin who turns up occasionally in some of your shows? Or Gordon. is that a different channel? The other Jordan. That is my channel, yes. Gordon <laughs> is my filmmaking twin who <laughs> Evelyn I do, I do like yeah, that. yeah. When I'm editing an episode with Gordon in it, her eyes light up. It is 
infuriating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He so, will be returning to the Petapixel like channel. He's a tough guy, Jordan. Yeah. Tough guy Jordan. He's just an arrogant. Yeah. Well, not, yeah. to, not, not to speculate about the future of DP and whether somebody's going to buy it from Amazon because they obviously value it so highly. Mm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, apparently, you video guys have got to be able to shoot B-roll in 8.3K, 60p, and raw for hours and hours yep. and hours continuously. This is the only test that matters. <sighs> Any but comment? I know. <laughs> uh, no, I, mean, I will shoot the odd bit. Like I, I was saying earlier in the show, I've shot an entire episode in 8K. It, it happens. I'm not going to shoot it in NRAW um, because it's, yeah, it's segments it's fast, that are that long and that, long and that long and that long and that long. You're not shooting continuously. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, some people are. You know, if you're an event shooter or something like that, it's important to know. Hey, this camera is gonna conk out yeah. at a certain yeah. point. But it, whether or not, I would say like. I would not recommend this camera because of yeah. the overheating issue. The only ones I would say that about were the Canon R5 and R6. It ruined multiple shoots for me, uh, those cameras. Yeah. But mm -hmm. in the real world, no, I don't think overheating is my top concern yeah. when I'm looking at a camera. Absolutely. You must, you must remember the hot red days and the gel packs in coolers and all the rest of that. <laughs> it, 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 there's a young lady I, oh, I, I, I know in, in Botswana who shoots in 35 to 40 degrees centigrade. And, and we persuaded her ultimately to get a Z9 because we know what that does in the heat and that's fine. She needs to stick it on a 800 or 600. Uh, and that's what you're going to do. You're not going to put it on some nice array or something. You're going to put it on a nice body that will, will. And then you'll put it in the fridge. You'll put the camera back in the fridge and go cool down and bring it on. <laughs> But of well, course, I remember when the Fujifilm X-T2 came out, we were shooting in New York on a Sony A6300 and we were mm -hmm. going into convenience stores, putting the batteries in the yeah. freezers, <laughs> go shoot around the block and then come yeah. back and pick up yeah. our batteries again to try and cool the camera down. And thankfully, those days of like obscene uh, yeah. overheating issues seem to be behind us now. And of course, you can always bolt on a fan or something else, providing it's not too really? noisy. <laughs> anyway. Nice to talk to you guys, and I love the channel. And were you the guys that did the interview with Chris O for about three hours, or was it the um, sports guy from Nikon? Um, yeah, I, I did an interview with Chris O from Nikon Canada. Is that who you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Cool guy. Good yeah. Lovely guy. Yeah, our tech talk. He's great. He's your Rishi. Pardon me? He's your Rishi, Rishi, Rishi Cherka, who's yes. a Nick, Nick on training guy. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Well, and, Andy, Andy's from uh, the UK, and over there they have Greys of Westminster, right? So yeah, they're, that, they're that, a camera that. store, yeah, and they yeah. have a channel. Yeah. Becky and Khan, you guys watch them at all, Evelyn and Jordan? No, I'll have to check that out. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, they, to the they, list. Yeah, they, they've supplied most of my Nikon gear, including the stuff down to my right, and my first Z9 will come from them. Thursday or Friday. Z8, sorry. The, Z8. Gray, the Greys of Westminster, Becky and Khan. I'm shouting you guys out, okay? That's a very interesting, <laughs> that's a very interesting attempt at an accent there, V. <laughs> <I'm sh> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Greys of Westminster. Yeah, we, I'm we, shouting don't, out. we don't all sound like a character from Guy Ritchie movie or Braveheart. <laughs> it's just not on there, mate. <laughs> anyway, lovely to see you. I'll leave you in peace. All right, Andy. Well, thanks, thanks Andy. Andy. Appreciate it. Well, guys, thank you so much. I know you guys have to run, but I want to just, first of all, thank you for being here. This was an amazing hour and 21 minutes. Uh, you guys are, like, I watch your stuff all the time, and me being YouTube, uh, in the, on the YouTube space, uh, you guys inspire me to do my thing on YouTube, too. So thank you, Evelyn. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you. And, Thanks, uh, Thanks so much. Looking forward to what you guys in the future and that feature that you guys are putting together i want to check that out too so all right guys uh thank you for watching everybody in the chat i want to thank everybody for commenting and asking questions and like subscribe to vahography if you haven't and by the way the camera store tv i'm sure you guys have heard of the channel but if you haven't subscribe to the camera store tv on youtube and also jordan drake petapixel Please, <laughs> Petapixel, we gotta like get them. those numbers up. We're starting over again. Thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, no, you guys are doing great, and you know, uh, fixtures in our community. So these two and the uh, the YouTube channels that they work for. So go ahead and like and subscribe. Next week, guys, same bad time, same bad channel. We have Nikon Ambassador Dixie 
Dixon on our show live. That's going to be great. Love Dixie. She's great. Check it out. Yeah, check it out. And you guys are welcome to join at the end and ask her a question if you guys want. Um, oh, fine. Cool. Tomorrow, I mean next week, same bad time, same bad channel, Dixie Dixon. All right, guys. Thank you, Rock and Roll, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys, again. Absolutely. Rock and roll. <laughs> All right. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.